what is up my dogs it's your boy mike mason yeah we're here for a another another banger dare i say man we've been dropping some heat lately not not my episodes those are the weaker link but <laughs> the oh, no. stuff we, we've had the chance to share <laughs> recently has been super fire tonight is is no different maybe even a little extra special man kurt b is an industry legend as i put it and uh man his work is incredible from the honey bear uh molded pieces back in the day uh to the blue willow kind of china style patterning that he's known for now always something cool with him and man it's just an honor to share this now we are sharing something from glass vegas this one i've actually been sitting on since like 2020 it's been a crazy couple of months or whatever since then. So <laughs> sometimes it feels like it's been a couple of months. Sometimes it feels like it's been like 20 years. I don't know. It just depends on the, the day and the time. Um, anyways, let me take a moment to introduce my lovely co-host, Carrie Strope up in the house. How are you? I'm doing all right. I'm hanging in there. Okay. All right. All yep. right. Hang, I got hanging. my trees. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I gotcha. Cool. Cool. We know Carrie loves them trees. That's right. <laughs> cool well hell yeah i'm so glad you're here with me and you're somebody who's been to every glass vegas as well am i wrong i think you're right you're right all right that's yeah. what's up yeah yeah carrie's been out there working the floor working the floor uh for hbo anyways um homies i did want talking about glass vegas here man we have dates dates have landed um mark those fucking calendars if you haven't already um this year's going to be probably as good as any. I got to admit, I laughed when I saw those dates because I was just imagining those guys like, you're not getting ahead of us this year to any other trade show or whatever <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing, man. Because it's pretty, that's pretty fucking early, man. That is, uh, that is maybe the earliest we've had a trade show in the year. But yeah, no, no, I'm just kidding. It's, uh, it, I'm really looking forward to this, man. Every year has been such a banger. This show, um, it just has such a variety of things going on from the two stages of demos with usually two stations going at once on each um world series of glass the boro derby just a million things to do and see beyond a billion booze and uh, educational thing the first day and then freaking awesome bands the first night too cool um and guys you might long time viewers might remember that uh we actually then they sent me something really cool uh this this dope metal print uh from one of the things that we one of the year we were there covering things and um man i got another box this box is curiously smaller than the last one i don't know what's in here but we're gonna open it up together and uh <clears throat> try not to cut myself here but yeah yeah i, I just got this <laughs> yesterday and that's so nice of these cats to think of your boy and have me involved with this awesome show that they put on. And it's so cool this to be able fun. to... Yeah, I'm just so thrilled to be able to share dank stuff like this and kind of bring the experience home for you guys out there who might not, you know, be in the position to get to a trade show or whatever it'll be, man. All right, how the fuck do I open this box, man? I'm <laughs> destroying this box. Okay, there's a whole nother series of things. Yeah, I gotta undo All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> all right here we go look at, whoa and that's first of all take oh. notes dogs oh, oh that's a, stuff's uh -oh. falling out here okay oh. oh there's a cool thank you card from the dogs man there's actually another one of these sitting over there on my wall of things i i love and yeah there's there's a big part of the team that puts this thing on you know and and these people you know believing in your boy and our community here is, is why we're gonna get to share such dang heat tonight so they're sending me this thing that say thank you but i think we should all thank them for all the hard work they've done to to build this thing up all right anyways speaking of building things up let's crack this bad boy <laughs> It's <laughs> I mean, like, dude, this is like, it's like some shit you give like your girlfriend Victoria's Secret panties in. Like, look at this. Yeah, this is this is a suspect. <laughs> what did they send out this year? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's looking like another bit of print. Oh, oh man, this this frame's got all kinds of mounting options on the back. So I'm not even gonna show you what's on the front. Just look at that shit. That is. <laughs> woo! That's how things should be mounted, baby. Look at that. Look at that reflection, man. That is great, eh? All right, here we go. 
Here we go. Oh shit, it's my boy Calm. What? What? Very oh, there's cool. Carrie and the reflection in the, hey, the screen and stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man, that thing has got some deadly reflection. There, let's put nice. it this yeah, way. Yeah. yeah, but that's that's the homie Calm and the Cold Burger collab. Fuck yeah, that was a great moment, man. Getting Calm, you know, we covered him. He was there. I, I've been talking about this history stuff a lot lately, but he was one of those artists on the gas lineup, that first thing that kind of set a lot of this in motion. So. He's somebody I've known for many years now, and we don't cross paths often, but when we do, he's always cool as fuck. Man, this shit is pimp as hell, dude. Is this thing fucking made out of metal, dude? It's shiny. I could, like, fucking do my hair in it. This is tight. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> but, yo, seriously, I, I, I can't say enough about how nice these people are and how thoughtful they are to have sent this over, man. This thing is dope. It's, like, heavy, heavier duty than I think the last one. I think I'm going to put this either this one on the wall or this one's going to the studio. Cause I've got two Ooh, now. Studio gig just, is I know, yeah. Like, I, I mean, yeah. This is fucking tight. All right. Um. Well, uh, man. Like I said, dude, these people are so fucking cool. It, it really means a lot that that uh, they, like I said, they look into the glassy heart of this community and make it possible for me to share dank shit. Speaking of dank shit, let's pop this party off, right? Let's do this. Back to Glass Vegas. Like I said, this is actually from 2020. I've been sitting on it a minute and just waiting for the right time to bring it up. And um, I think we're going to be getting, we're going to be doing like kind of a Kurt B deep dive. Because um, we have some awesome footage of him from Pipe Classic as well, where he actually shared his process for doing the patterning, the sandblasting and masking. And the sandblaster was automated. At cool. At the Burn Gallery there. Huge shout outs to them and looking forward to the Pipe Classic finale. I really need to update that graphic because the Cyber Pipe thing is about as old as Cyber Sex. I don't know. Not as planned. But <laughs> in any event, um, yeah, man. All these companies you guys are take that we're seeing here over the next minute, taking a moment to shout them out. They pitch in a bit or help me with the arrangements. One way or another, they're supporting this mission. Uh, to provide dank coverage for our industry and give us the opportunity to learn and and get together and have this this nice time together so a uh, huge huge shout outs to them and and to all of y'all out there who are just here in good spirits you know making it a party so it takes a village <laughs> but here true. we are with kurt b like i said man really uh, in my opinion this is the legend in our industry known for a really awesome variety of things and been doing this so long huge shout outs to him uh the crew that rolls with him and uh sarah i believe super fucking nice people and just always a pleasure to cross paths and yeah so check it out right out the gate we're getting some dank uh, methodology here the homie has got a tooling roller he's got it on uh, some wood here he's got it up at torch height this is something i did recently with the lab jack but you can kind of get an idea of how he's got it in the right position and has the torch adjusted to where it's hitting that lip and he's able to just flare these things kind of in the flame and it goes very fast and the heat is is so even because it's you know it's on a tooling roller so are we pulling some stringer down here? I can't pretend I even remember what the stringer's for. It might be just to fill in a gap in a seal if it happens or something when he's doing the joint. Always be prepared. Yeah, we're going we gonna to find out together at that. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, um, man, Kurt is... is the variety of work that he does and then the scale that he does it at like this piece is diesel the piece that he made at, at pipe classic that year was even more ridiculous as i recall and it's uh <laughs> the dude is beast mode i really don't know how else to put it and yet a gentle giant he really is just <laughs> one of like the coolest very very humble dude you know Which is yeah, really... he's really nice. I got a chance to film him at Melt in 21. Yeah. It's 
like, I say that about almost everybody, but if somebody's a douchebag, I probably just sat on the footage, you know? No, I'm just playing, man. I think <laughs> <laughs> the truth of the matter is, you know, if you get on a stage like this, dude, you know, you, people got to got to know you got the right vibe, you know? Like, they don't want to put some jerk up there. True I mean, true. there's none of those in our industry, but, you know. <laughs> and, yeah, here he's getting the – I think this this will be the section for the bottom because it's got all the patterning on the piece, but the bottom itself is clear. And here we saw him bring that out, and then, um, you know, when you drag that, that glass out on the tooling roller or puff it out, when you're just drilling the end it just it allows for a really centered hole to just kind of naturally want to happen so i think that was part of like the maybe he doesn't even think about this but what i'm thinking when i'm doing it like this is that it's so nice to be able to open the hole up when you're just rolling it and then knowing that it's pushing right to the center in really even heat and then you're you're generally going to be able to open a hole uh, I was watching Taffy do the same thing with his roller setup from his uh, 2022 Glass Vegas demo, which is on Torch Pass if you guys are on there. If you want to support your boy, man, with five bucks a month, a lot of footage hits there early. Um, that's in the video description or torchpass.org. But anyways, Taffy was doing this, a similar thing and just kind of opening the hole, you know, after, it, after like pre-setting it by dragging some glass out or puffing some glass out. Just keeps it super centered and, and really sets you up to put that handle on centered. And the, it's like the tooling roller. You'll see him check for straightness and all that. But if you've opened the hole a little off, it's like you're really fighting there because you're going to have to like bring it up or down a bit. And that's just such a gangly move on a seal. But if you also open the hole on the tooling roller and it just starts really centered then you're just going to have to make very minor adjustments from there and that's what we're seeing him do right here just rolling it on there watching the way that tube moves at the front the back in my opinion the further out part is more important because that's where you're really going to see what's up but regardless this methodology of checking for straightness on a tooling roller allows you to really kind of start on the good foot you know especially in the beginning you've really got to watch out for that you know like pushing maria's all these these things like they're they're not that hard if your handles are really centered you know from there it's just like eliminating a huge variable like if the handles are centered and you're moving relatively evenly the heat is going to kind of want to be even but if your handle is off, even if your rotation is clean and your positioning's good, it's just not going to, um, it's just not going to soak in as evenly. So it's like all of these things starting that way at this moment. And you can see how that flame is kind of slip streaming over the thing. He's not just drilling it in the center. It's like at this angle that the flame kind of rolls over the tube. That's an interesting angle. You can do it even lower and, and like get less, less heat. So something to think about. Now he's got it more centered and he's just drilling, but those like slipstream flames can be fun. They can kind of wrap around a little more and give you some angles. So yeah, I think here he's just separating this and getting ready to pull down the blank size to match, you know, to make the big ass bottom of the beaker. That's a good sentence. Got a lot of bees. <laughs> Big ass, beautiful baby bottom of the beaker. <laughs> <laughs> be. Lots of alliteration. Yeah, yeah. Even the title, like 10 minutes after I posted the video, it was like Blue Willow Tube or something. And I was like, the fuck's wrong with me? It's a Blue Willow Beaker. I'm, I'm, I'm resistant to the beaker thing because it's like, a, you know, the beaker is like a cup. A flask is the like the triangular shit, but at some point, pipe makers just decided to steal that term, and we're like, we don't care. Beaker sounds good, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Blue Willow Beaker by Kurt B does sound more beautiful. 
beyond beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> There he is, just pulling away that glassiness so it's got the, the, the right kind of even thing to set up. If you pull that away too much, you know, you're going to have these thick-ass walls in the taper. Too little, you're going to have this thin-ass glass on the taper, you know. So it's always nice to kind of bring it down until you see it kind of naturally setting up to match the wall weight. To me, that's always ideal. Sometimes you got that scrap piece of tube, you know, and you just kind of like marver it down and and then it just ends up all extra thick. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do, but if you want to work clean like Kurt B. Yeah, just nice clean section there now. Ready for anything. Open that up pretty wide. Setting up for a big boy seal. Stevie going full Greta Thunberg on us <laughs> tonight. <laughs> That's just true, though, man. Flame working is on the sketchier list of things, you know. But I don't know. My feelings on this are that, like, 10 mega corporations, you know, are just doing, like, exponentially more polluting, you know. Like, one of these companies in, like, 30 seconds probably emits more horrific shit than every flame worker put together around the world does all year. It's just a matter of scale, you know. Especially so if the EPA doesn't have any yeah. in it. Well, you know, I mean, I'm not going to get into the, all of that, but there's a lot of data that backs up, you know. There's, like, some really worst offending companies and things that are just doing 99% of the problem, you know. And it's it's not to say that we all shouldn't do our part, you know, and be cognizant of our impact and all that. But at the same token, it's like you can't expect me to feel bad about, you know, making glass artwork when... At the end of the day, the, the the bigger issues are much, much wider and systemic in the way we power our world and consume goods and all that. So it's like, fuck, man, I mean, what do you want me to do? Switch to a smaller torch or something? You know, it's just not practical. And, it, you know, it's the same calculus as driving a car and this and that. It's like, yeah, well, we do the best we can and buy the low emission one or whatever or... Or you go the other way and you put, like, the huge diesel on there, you know, and you roll coal on, on liberals, man. It's all good either way. I mean, not really. That's not good. But it just goes to speak to, like, even if you try to correct, man, there's going to be some other party taking advantage of the opening you do, you know. It's really the social version of trading, like, uh, the coal the coal caps or whatever, you know. And then the companies trade their emissions to companies uh, that don't need them, you know. So what I'm saying is, don't worry about all that. Let's just destroy the Earth. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, it's like we'll I find said, another man, planet like, soon. NASA's yeah, up there. Not to get political or anything. It's just, I, I do my best, you know, to, to be cognizant and all that. But at the end of the day, man, the, the, what, what we do is just, if you put a list of the offensive industries, man, we're, we've got to be way down that fucking list, you know. Especially when it comes to scale. Yeah, exactly. So. <clears throat> so anyway, this glass is gorgeous. Right. So here's one of these amazing uh, blue willow sections. With this patterning. And look at that. It's so awesome. It really like, it just kills this.
And yeah, here I think he's did he getting. Did he leave it with that clear, or did he just pull this out? No, no, the clear is going to be the bottom. So I think he's he's getting okay. this set up to seal the clear to this, and then I want to blow it out together into the the beaker shape, as it were. So yeah, like I said, he'd opened up kind of a big boy hole on that clear piece. So it's going to take a big boy hole on this one. I'll shout out, there's Jess from Carlisle in the back, man, the homie. Real cool cat, helps do all the setup out at Melt. And he is a championship level barefoot water skier, you guys, if you haven't seen, any, right. any, uh, seen us randomly share footage of that. An avid RVer the glass studio in his RV. Well, yeah, he does that, but it's also set up to be a print shop. Yeah. And he makes really cool like metal signage and all sorts of stuff. If you ever need any sort of printing stuff, don't be afraid to maybe sort hunt him down. Yeah, really cool cat. Really knows his stuff with the torches. One of those guys, it's nice to be able to tag in the social group. And, you know, here's kind of, you know, what I was mentioning before, too. Like, if you're going to open a hole and, ha and like, kind of generate a shoulder, so to speak. Like, I think he just, I think that thing was thickening up and it was getting kind of weird where it was going to connect to the bottom. So he kind of, he, he, maybe, maybe not. Maybe this is always how he does it. But it kind of looked like he was like, okay, maybe I don't want to seal up to that. I'm going to diamond shear that down. Give myself the opportunity to puff that out, get that shoulder glass kind of reset and even with the wall again. Just my thoughts. He might not be thinking about this stuff at all, but, you know, there really is something to be said for taking that extra moment when you're setting something up, especially if it's just about to get in calmo kind of sealed into another section. Sometimes you can get away with that if it's like a, a solid pattern like this and you're never going to see the fact that, that the wall is thickening in certain areas. But it really is like a best practice kind of thing because the more even that glass is, the happier it's going to be. And those transitional areas of thickness just set up stress points. And it, it might seem cool that the glass is thicker, but... A lot of times that's not really the case. So yeah, it looks like it's, yeah, it's kind of cooking this in, letting that glass there even out. And then he'll be able to open this and have a super clean approach. Yeah, if you can get into the habit of doing that, just better for you in the long run. Even if you're just opening up a clear blank, to, you know, to, to do something else with and that part will get tossed later. It's just a good thing to close it down, give it the old puffity puff and have that nice, you know, like even weight dome, so to speak, to open a hole on and seal up to, which is... It's just working clean. Nothing crazy. And yeah, like I said, um, in the near future, we're going to have another, like, Kurt B. evening. Um, and we'll see some footage from Pipe Classic where he actually had the Sandblaster there. Like, at Pipe, the Pipe Classic competition is awesome. You have to do everything there. It's not like some of these things where they'll let you bring a box of prep or like a lot. 
A lot of events lately, it's it's just turned into a free for all where dudes will spend weeks on something and then show up and kind of do the finishing touches and I mean that results in much cooler pieces for the show or whatever like for the event itself, but leaves a little something to be, to be desired in um, in terms of getting to watch the process. So um, Pipe Classic is kind of a dream in that sense. You know, all these guys come out and like I'm just sitting there watching them do like the cool prep thing that they're known for. Just like, ha ha, fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah. This is tight. Um, and his sandblasting setup, it's like a CNC kind of automated thing and it like, it goes in like a little lathe, like a one-sided lathe almost and spins around like automatically. So he's just over there doing something else while this thing is sandblasting the, the pattern in there for him perfectly evenly or not perfectly but very close to perfectly more evenly than you'd ever get by hand because it's just sitting there at a very constant speed you know on the blasting and the uh rotation so we'll get into that in the near future but it's really great to see like a, these types of pieces worked and yeah we're really going to see this thing start to come together but there we go yeah now now that he kind of was able to cook that down and even that out nice nice hole there really nice and centered and ready to seal that um that clear glass on Switch to a little bigger reamer there. Just opening this up nice and nice and clean. Sometimes these moves are better accomplished in a couple of heats. A lot of times you'll end up thickening that lip if you try and put enough heat into it to do the whole flare at once. And that and then you just end up with something that's, you know, you're getting away from the ideal that you started with. So by taking a couple of steps to open this, you know, and it gives him the chance to, like, change the tool and... Don't get me wrong. He's a boss. He could probably do it all in one go if he were challenged to. But there's something to be said for giving that hole an initial kind of... Just an initial widening. And then you can get a little bit more... Give it a little more juice. And give it another go. A piece like this, especially about to have a nice seal done to it, you, you just don't want to don't want to take any chance of initiating, you know, material shifting around out. It's one of those sealed things, and there's like the ideal seal is even, so the wall weights are even. It is round, I mean, you don't want one being off, and then it's flush, so they're both flat, not, not having a little bleb sticking out and all that. When those things are all done, and you've heated them evenly and done a good job of sticking them together, you know, all that, that work just moves. We talked about like a Mike Nan thing, that 40-40-20 concept of seals, you know, where 40% of the work is, is what I was mentioning, the having it round, having it centered, having it flush, having the walls even. And then in the next 40% is that, you know, getting that good, the right heat in and, you know, not sticking them off center or whatever to each other. The mechanics there, you know, and the initial cook in. And then from there, you should have 20% of your work left. The whole, the, the kick of it is that if you fuck up any of those parts they transfer to the next step so if you're slacking on your setup or you fucked up the stick then yeah now your cleanup job is 50 percent of your labor instead of a quick run around with the hand torch so a lot of these concepts come into play and you really see it repeatedly uh, in the work of guys like this who just who really know what they're doing and who are working clean. I 
hammer on that one a lot, but I really like it. It's a great it's a great teaching analogy for seals and the various steps of them and everything really. I've got a litter box story about that from grandma, but do it right the first time. And oh, it doesn't goodness. take nearly as long. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yeah. imagine sneaky Gary. <laughs> There's another thing we were talking about recently, this notion of giving it those rolls in the Elmarver and kind of cooling the surface in a really round state and then giving it that puff, which allows the inner glass to move a bit more and just naturally want to even out. I've come up with some new trade analogies. For, no, I'm just playing. <laughs> 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 Folks were not, not happy with my plumbing <clears throat> talk last time or whatever. <laughs> They're like, this analogy sucks. Boo. Oh, Even the plumber it. was like not feeling it. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> screw you, Mario. <laughs> Get it? Super Mario. Plumber. Oh yes, yes, of course. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing babe. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, I never know with my jokes. Yeah, Beachtown Arts said, I get nervous doing simple shit in my garage alone. I can imagine how this feels with everyone watching. Right? It's crazy. I'd be like, all right, everybody, I'm going to need you to look away until I've edited out any problematic moments for broadcast on Torch Talk in 16 weeks. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right, so yeah, really starting to adjust the diameter here. But yeah, like I said, this is just what I was talking about last week where we saw Grimm also at Glass Vegas. You know, really taking the exactly what we're seeing right now, giving it those rolls in the Elmarver and then the puffs. And repeating this process is really... Like, I, I, I wish we had, like... Uh, like cosmos level visuals, you know, it'd be like Neil deGrasse Tyson, like, let's look into the wall of the glass, you know, and we get like all of a sudden like 3D fucking space glass comes in and slices in half, you know, with like <laughs> grid lines and all that shit. And like, I'm like, surprised you're not on top of this already. I know, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you're the graphics guy around here, I thought. <laughs> what are we streaming? Yeah. <laughs> All right, it looks like he's kind of tapering, starting the taper there. We're just getting rid of that glass at the top. We'll see. YouTube tells me that now would be a good time to insert ads. <laughs> Creators earn more money inserting ads the more viewers are watching. Give it a try. All right. Oh, what? So ads don't automatically start now? Is that it? Bam! I just shot an ad at y'all. It's telling me this it. makes me money, so I'm just going to hit this button every time it pops. No, just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how any of this works. The truth is I've never gotten a check from, from Google for more than like 150 bucks. So, <laughs> like, yeah, if anybody thinks I'm out here making like big YouTube money, uh, you're crazy. Right. Yeah, I gotta like. I need, I need to either 
get a rocking set of tits or something under like i don't know you gotta like couldn't hurt couldn't yeah hurt. Like, either that or like a, a cat or something and you, like no I'm, I'm just kidding but like you gotta have like viral videos or some kind of silly type of thing um to get millions of, of views and i just don't want to pander to that i like that we have a, a small scale kind of a party for us I don't really, I don't really want to do anything to necessarily like flood this chat room with like everybody who smokes weed. You remember when like, t- 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 I don't even want to name any, but whatever, you know, when these like cannabis influencers who are old and probably racist, not just playing. <laughs> Man, these motherfuckers, <laughs> they go live and they've got like. Like, t- a thousand people watching at once, you know? And they're all just, like, getting high and all this shit. And it's, like, nothing against that. I love that. But I'm not 100% certain that, like, you guys who have been here who actually blow glass or want to blow glass or, you know, or whatever, I- I'm just not certain that that's the right thing to do. And I still don't think it would make that much more, you know? Like, you really do got to have some silly like video games or pc hardware there's all these things gotta, gotta start space you know YouTube what i mean shorts and shout Instagram outs to reels. the yeah shout outs to the dog will out there man you know what i mean like doing the space shit there's all these topics that have millions of people who are interested and that doesn't really happen to be pipe making unless you target the like the puffin crowd you know and like i said nothing against that I'm just not sure I want to, like, flood our audience with that and, like, make this this thing that, you know, is really for our community. Is this the um, Penguin TV you're talking about? What's that? Puffins? Penguin TV? <laughs> I want to I see this channel. I want to see that <laughs> channel, too. But I'm not, I just mean, you know, the, these kind of um, broadcasts that are oriented towards collectors and to users of the things, whereas... Right. Uh, this is a channel oriented towards the makers of these things and people who are sincerely interested in glass process. Turn up and, the annealing like, flame. Like yep. he, that's who I want to party with. <laughs> no offense, you know what I mean. But if like if you're watching this channel now, it's because you're like sincerely interested in you know how this is done and and interacting, connecting with creators and. Yeah, like, I'm just not willing to pander to change that. Like, we have an awesome audience. I really do love you guys, and I feel like like this is exactly the type of crowd that we've always wanted to cultivate to enjoy this. And I don't know. I'd also like to find some kind of um, maybe a Creative Commons type of setup or something like that to where I can make this available to people who want to make cooler stuff like that. Like, if there's some college kid who wants to make, like, shorts or something with this shit and get, like, mad views and throw me a fat cut, not just playing, but, like, I want to find a way <laughs> to make some of this dank content available for people to do creative things with as well. I'm not sure what the structure on that looks like. I think but... there is a way to do it in the settings, but I don't know. Yeah, yeah. like, it, there's a thing that, where it, I don't know. So, yeah, like, there's a setting in there that says, like, allow embedding, and I've got that going. I don't and really care. I think, too. If you can find a way to just to, to put positive light on what we do, cool. I don't mind, but I'd like to find some way to to let others have fun with this. I don't know. All right, so homie took a re- took a good minute there. That that blank looks you know almost the same now, but we we know. We just know that because what we watched him do, um, we know that this blank is really nice inside. And the more you can set that up, it's like that, that, that old sticker. Um, the one, it was inspired by something Mattis Cookie said, you know, he was like, you can't marvel your problems away. And what he meant by that was that if the outside is a little wonky and you're just really basic about it and kind of roll it and give a quick puff and it looks great, cool if that's the end. But if you still have to shape the section, 
um, what you've done is you've really just pushed that shit from the outside to the inside. And that's what he means by not, you can't marvel your problems away. And um, in this case, though, by really setting the outer proper and letting the in, and doing it repeatedly, like I said, we know that the heat is soaked in, and by puffing it out with the outer already really nice and cylindrical and cooled, it's just going to want to even out, and repeating that process is just going to make it more and more even every time if you've kind of set the variables right. So um, something to think about there. It's like... You can't marvel your problems away, but you can damn sure use that marvel to help you solve them kind of thing, you know? Like, you don't want to be aggressive with it, but if you're just trying to even a section out or get it happier, that's the process. That's the move, you know? It's, it's almost like a coil pot, but you don't want to necessarily puff it out and condense it as much. So what can you do? You can heat the outside, cool the outside, and keep letting that heat soak to the middle. And then give it the puff action. And like I said, it's just going to result in a more even piece of prep. Which now he's going to do a significant amount of shaping on this. And like, <laughs> I mean, dude, like, yeah, they're Kurt B, they're Mattis Cookie, they're this or that. But the reason they're doing this work ahead of time is that like, they're not fucking robots on Westworld, you know, nailing three hole-in-ones in a row or whatever, okay? Like, they're humans, just like us. And, like, yeah, they've got great muscle memory and, you know, experience level, so to speak, built on that. But those, those things that they do to even the wall before they actually start doing the shaping is why they nail the shapes all the time, you know? Um... So it's really just something to think about, man. If you're really trying to shape on glass and it's, like, going weird, like maybe think about, like, uh, well, did you push some shit into the... What's that inner wall look like, you know? What would happen if you got surgical and took it to a saw? Would you really find an even wall inside, you know? And that can be easy to fool yourself about if the prep is not... Uh, if the prep is not transparent, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So, again, that process of heating... And repuffing it out. And now he's about to make a giant fucking beaker shape. Get a step away for a bit. I'm really certain that it's going to go better because of that time that he took to kind of go through the section and just really make sure it's happy. Okay, looks like he's, he's, he pulled that stringer for a lip wrap. I don't remember that, but... It has been 15 years since we filmed this in 2020, so <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Carrie stepped away, but I've got her in the meat on my top screen, and her cat is totally just like walking around the room, checking it all out while she's gone. The cat doesn't know I can see him, but <laughs> she's like, mm, time to sniff around all this shit while she's not looking. This is why my channel's not going viral because I'm more interested in showing you guys this dank lip wrap than uh, showing you the cat action. All right, here's that clip move. He's got that extra little bit there, you know. There's always an extra little bit. Yashin likes to let it kind of cool and snap it off. A lot of guys like to go in with those scissors and just yink. Get that bleb. Carrie, I was telling the audience about how while you were gone, I was just watching Trixie check out the room. <laughs> she was just going around sniffing everything like, oh, yeah, she's That's gone. Funny. Nobody, <laughs> nobody at all can see me. And That's nobody hilarious. would certainly tell an audience on YouTube about this. Never. Spy cam busted. Yeah, busted. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then, a lot. so after that lip wrap, um, gave it kind of an initial cook in. 
Looks like he's going around and cleaning it up even more now. Kind of looks like he just sliced that whole fucking thing off. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> I think it allowed him to even up that opening and everything. <laughs> Coop Scoop in the chat asks, how did he get that blue pattern design on? And we've been talking about it a little bit earlier, but if you just got here, um, I think it's called the Grawl technique where you mask and sandblast out a pattern. So this, he'll take white tubing and give it a coating of like cobalt powder to get like a really even coating and then he'll sandblast through that uh, revealing the white underneath and leaving a thin layer of the um, thing he might have even striped it with the, the cobalt too I forget I've got footage of it though uh, from pipe classic that we'll share pretty soon actually I'm not I, I don't like to like jump into one event when we're talking about another but Pipe Classic is fucking dope, and Pipe Classic and the the Glass Vegas homies are all really tight, so I don't think they mind. Um, yeah, the finale of Pipe Classic is coming up later, and yeah, really excited about that. But at that one, uh, he actually brought in the sandblaster and the masking thing and the software, all of it. So here in the near future, we're going to uh, dip into that and share exactly how these patterns are done. I was talking about it briefly earlier, so I don't want to repeat myself, but I will say that sandblaster and everything is cool as fuck. It's like a CNC controlled kind of automated thing. So it just like, it's it's almost like a lathe, you know, and it's automatically going in and out and in and out. <laughs> Oops, sorry. Sorry guys, I got so excited. Drop my <laughs> microphone. But anyways, it's kind of like a fucking machine for glass and sandblasting. It's just really slow. <laughs> it kind of is. Though. It's just like in and out, in and out. So. <laughs> he actually told me it's a repurposed sex. Ma no, I'm just playing. But oh yes. So I was just. Uh sharing a link to an Instagram channel in chat for Judith Schachter. So this whole like, grawl technique that's going on here where he made this thin coating of blue on top of the wet and then sandblasted it away. They actually used to do this in soft glass with hand-blown glass, mouth-blown glass, where they'd make sheet glass and they would have a layer of generally clear with a thin layer of color over the top of it. And then artists could sandblast their designs away in addition to painting. So Judith Schachter does some amazing work with that and she's got a really cool aesthetic, but In case you wanted to know. Yeah, her work's amazing. <laughs> yeah, the homies in the chat mentioned similar to Slinger's tech. I think some of his work is probably done very similarly. I couldn't say for sure, but... I'd imagine so. All right. And look at that. That is an opening to write home about. Seriously, though, like, look at that. That that thing tapers just down nice and even. The opening is just right. All right, so this looks like what would be the neck. And he's going to get that prepped up to do the seal there as well. Big shout outs to Breath uh, Rick702 in the chat <laughs> who was missing a high. How rude of everyone. 
No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you got to say hi to get the hi back, though. You know what I mean? Love is a two-way street, folks. Indeed. That's what I always say to Carrie. I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Huge shout outs to everybody in the chat. I really do appreciate you guys making this thing fun and a party for all of us. It's um, it's what makes this all ultimately possible. You know, I'm happy to, to show up and... Guys, I don't want to sound like a hero, but I don't mind traveling all the time and seeing cool people in amazing cities and basically living a perpetual vacation but no i'm just kidding. it's not quite like and that, then but. coming back and grinding hard to catch up yeah. <laughs> but no i really i really I, I i love what i get to do uh we work very hard and then i spend a lot of time at home and all that but at the end of the day though i am i'm kind of like living a dream and it's because you guys are all cool as fuck and make this thing a, a you know make this community a positive thing and you know, events like this, man, they, they, they see that and they're like, all right, all right, Mike, I guess you can come back another year. <laughs> God. We'll I'm begrudgingly send you this photo. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just playing. It's not on like metal. Me, yeah. <laughs> I'm always blown away a little bit that it's not, you know. But really, I do. I feel like I'm like the luckiest dude in Boro because of, of what you guys have made possible for me to do over the past basically seven years. I was mentioning, you know, a lot of this all came about because of an opportunity to do a live broadcast at the gas conference in 2017. But it was Melt and Glass Vegas that really had us out before any of that. And it gave me the opportunity to get some sea legs. And it's crazy to think that, yeah, year seven of Las Vegas is going to happen in January. 13th through 15th, dogs, mark the calendar if you didn't see the graphic earlier or haven't seen it on social media or whatever. We got dates. Just laugh and imagine another trade show like December 26th through 29th. <laughs> Back, you know, kind of thing. Like, like Las Vegas 2024 is going to be like January 2nd through 5th or something. So he's got the mouthpiece on the handle right now, right? This is the mouthpiece, yes. So I believe he's going to seal this to the section that's going to get blown out into the to the beaker shape, as us weed injectors call it. <laughs> weed injectors. <laughs> We're shooting up. <laughs> I was laughing watching the boys or talking about the boys with Carrie recently. If anybody out there watching that show, it's exactly what I was thinking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're talking about that temp V. I'd be like, you know, I'd be dabbing that shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mike, it's gonna kill you. <laughs> Sorry, baby. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> be up on that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Mike, could you not dab temp V twenty times a day? <laughs> yeah the homie in chat was saying he was just watching that Westworld yeah the new season's pretty good that last episode was a real banger I gotta say I passed out to it again later <laughs> so I was like that this is one I gotta watch twice here actually cause so much there was a lot going on 
No wonder you remember it so much better than I do. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was, like, cooking hot dogs and shit when we were watching it together. Spoiler alert. Oh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I did miss a couple of minutes. <laughs> Out here cooking glizzies? <laughs> Mike. <sighs> Kurt's gonna watch this tomorrow. Like, Mike, can you just take that down, man? All the... <laughs> too much. Too much, dude. All sorts of controversy there. I just can't deal with it. <laughs> yeah, we have fun here, though. Is that Mike Shelbo in the background? I, I only know is. him from Blown Away. Never met the guy, but... <laughs> I'm just playing, yeah. Mike's awesome, yeah. We, I, uh, it's always a pleasure to cross paths with him. He's cool as fuck. But yeah, now he is the MC at Glass Vegas for at least a few years now. So it's like we've we've really his voice is kind of there, doing a lot of announcements and that sort of thing. And yeah, they did him dirty. I'm blown away. And speaking of Blown Away, guys, um, the new season is, is like 10 days away or something. Uh, and every year we've done a watch party. So how it works is there's a, a plug-in. I think it's for a couple of different browsers, but it's called Teleparty. It used to be called Netflix Party. But it allows you to watch with like anybody who has the link, essentially. You do need to have a Netflix subscription. Which, frankly, I haven't had for years. Like, I have a bunch of sites, but I actually bounced on Netflix a while ago. It's like, you're not going to be hearing any references to the new season of Stranger Things and such. Other than the fact that, like, I'm tired of seeing that because it's like, I can't like, go to the supermarket without seeing, like, Stranger Things chicken nuggets and this and that. <laughs> like, oh, man, come on now. I'm not eating some one-off product. Because I'm afraid if I like it, I won't be able to get it later. You know what I mean? Like, well, are I going to wait for season five now? God damn it. Anyway. <laughs> but I will we'll be signing up for at least one account that me and Carrie will share. <laughs> <laughs> and, um... But hey, not to get too far from the glass. A big move is happening here. It's so much of what we were talking about. Like... You saw the way he got that hole open on both sides really evenly. The openings, they didn't have a bunch of weirdness. I mean, he went out of his way to, to prepare each of these holes so that it had a nice even wall, perfect cylinders, super flush, so that when he did that seal, there's really not a lot of glass to get shifted around. Simply glass in the house. Good to see you, dude. Yo, it's not going to be long, man. I mean, I... I or I should say, will I see you at the uh, the next can of brew? The dog, nice to cross paths out there. And guys, if you're not familiar, can of brew, Kansas City, Missouri. Awesome cannabis competition. Put on by some really good homies of mine. Really amazing time. We actually are sitting on like a good bit of footage from that too. I, mean, I know we shared some already, but... Man, oh man, that was an awesome time, and they're they're going to be in their second year. It's one of those things, man, I feel so lucky to be involved with some of these events from the very beginning. In a lot of ways, I'm like a beginner to the industry. I started flame working in 2013. So, like, all the hard work had already been done by ballers like Kurt B., you know, and establishing this industry and all of that. But, at the same token... You know, there's still a lot of change in the industry, you know. I mean, it's crazy to me that Pipe Classic is about to have their finale, you know. And at the same time, you know, other other events are just getting into their second year. And other events are taking years off and will probably come back in a totally different form. That motherfucker probably ain't going to be called next. Melt next time, I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's nothing I should get into, but, I mean, you know, Melt took the year off this year to kind of readjust, and, yeah, there's, we'll see what happens there. But it's neat, too, you know, 
some of these voids make opportunities for other events to kind of step in or, you know, whereas they, maybe they wouldn't have done something so social at that time. We've got the uh, the glass bash to look forward to. Ooh, uh, down in right, Florida. Yeah, it's like, what is it, November 1st through 3rd, I guess? I don't know. Right after Halloween, I think, yeah. Yeah, right after Halloween. All right, and look at this. This almost looks like one piece of glass now. Just with the taper and everything. Ross in the chat asks, is shot glass good? And I think so in general. There's two types. There's like shot Duran or whatever, which is uh, like kind of the scientific stuff, like much tighter tolerances. And then there's like shot artistic, which is kind of like not quite as precise. And it kind of depends what you want to do. Um, I'm personally like a Cymax guy. But that's been a little weird, too, sometimes recently. Um, and it's like some sometimes there'll be differences in the same company's tubing for fuming and stuff like that. And it might have to do with how long the existing furnace thing has been in use. There's all these su suggested reasons. I don't really understand any of it. But... Even, you know, so you, I, it kind of depends on what you want to do. I mean, there's nothing wrong with shot. Is it the best thing to encase fume right now? I have no idea. I, I should probably have bought samples of each and tested. All right, so look at this. Like I said, man, you could barely even if at all tell that there was a junction between that neck and the can now right like look at that that is some that is some clean shit right there and now i do believe he's going to need to open another hole there on the bottom which is where the clear section will connect cuz the bottom is clear Could the homies in chat now talking about crazy tube shapes? Sorry if anybody lost a second or three there. YouTube says, we're not receiving enough video. Everything looks good. It looks like just for a second my internet was like, whatever. Not like I don't pay $145 a month for this now. It was 130 Crazy. but once I got through the first year of my new contract, they jacked me up a bit more, you know? Oof. I know, it's ridiculous. Don't ever get yourself into a contract with Comcast Business, guys. Just do the cheap Xfinity shit. Regret it. And they're just brutal, because when I moved, they were like, well, to transfer your service, you have to either start a new contract or you have to terminate your contract. And to buy out the contract was like thousands of dollars. I was just Jeez. like, oh my fucking god, I cannot believe this. Like, I have legitimate proof I'm moving and everything. And they were just like, nope, son. Not happening. All right, so here we go. Like I was mentioning, he opened up a pretty big opening on that clear. So I was imagining he was going to be opening a big boy hole on this when it was time. And here it is, yeah. And you guys saw he did kind of like, um, he, like, uh, what do they call it? I'm not certain even what the term is now. I'm drawing a blank right now. Stevie, what's it called when you blow it out really thin as you're terminating to open a, a to open the hole? <laughs> <laughs> but in any event, you saw him really thin that out right at where he was separating it so that there wasn't a mass of glass there and now he's kind of cooked that back and here's this move that you know i love man is where you're going in on the marver and using the paddle to hit that end 
and then reaming it and repeating this process, you get you you end up with a virtually stock tube and just very quickly. And this actually, he had it just for a second out there, but look, he's looking at that wall and he took that extra time to really rework that section and, and it looked identical at the end, but because we know he got it nice and hot and rounded it and all that, we just know the inner wall is super clean. All right, here we go. This is a real big boy seal right here. This tube is already crazy, the scale of it and everything. Just that much weight to carry. I mean, it looks cute on camera, but trust me, you put a piece of glass like this in your hands, I mean, you're going to be like, oh, damn. Kurt B. Yeah, okay, homies have filled me in. It, it, it was definitely a flame cut. I was just trying to think if there's a term for it when you actually blow it out as well. But it's that's probably just a twist on the flame cut or how he did the flame cut. And here we go. Here's like that second 40%. Because look at how even those walls are, are set up. Look at how round that is. Look at how evenly they match. And then look at how, how he got them so nicely hot. And he even used the elm arbor there to bring them together so that there was just no directional shift uh, in the seal. So what we're seeing right now is like the second 40, so to speak, and that 40-40-20 thing that I always like to hammer on. Like I said, I didn't come up with it. Mike Nan, Merge Scientific, taught me this. I took a class with him where he kind of taught us how to use a lathe. Yeah. Fucking a germ showed up randomly because he was like in town or something and did uh, one of his crane demos and did this whole talk about uh, artistic inspiration. That was a really great experience, I have to say. Shout outs to Virtue uh, out there in Maryland for putting that together. That was a great experience and but Mike Nan, I mean, just one of the finest scientific glass workers out there doing absolutely epic scale work. And I really like that methodology that he uses to kind of teach seals. So I, I, I hammer on it pretty often, but. And here I'd say we're, I mean, it's not like a, like a, a joint seal or something where you're going to go around with a hand torch, but now we're in like the cleanup phase. And because he attached them so cleanly and cooked them in so smoothly, now when he just gave it those those last, you know, that last really, that last establishment of dank heat kind of thing, <laughs> now these pieces are really happy together. A lot of mustache comments out there yeah dude <laughs> kurt looking straight iconic with the proper stash it's like a competition level stash i mean the glasses and the hat kind of complement it as well yep the whole it's a whole vibe it really is Homies in the chat are asking about the patterning again, so we'll, we'll touch on that for like the third time. But So essentially, guys, he starts with like a white tube and then puts cobalt over it and then sandblasts the cobalt off with masking to establish these patterns. And then he might so sleep it from there color. as well. I was going to say, well, when you put the glass in the flame like that, it turns red. <laughs> 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 Thanks for that. All right, so you guys can see the uh, the beaker 
shape or the flask shape in scientific terms. But in bong maker terms, he's setting up a beaker. And if this is very similar to how I do it and how I, you know, is to kind of initially establish that bubble on the end. And then I kind of go in and work the saddle between that bubble and the rest of it and bring that out. So, yeah. Bubble on the end, then work that taper. And you're going to end up with a nice conical shape. And here it is. Yeah, see that? Now he's on the saddle. Palladium beats in the house. What up, player? We're chilling, man. It's such a pleasure to be sharing this type of stuff with you guys. I really am. I mean, it, 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 I'm just honored to, to be able to share this type of stuff with you guys that the Glass Vegas homies put their trust in you, boy, to, to be on that stage and be respectful and all that. It's a whole thing, man. It requires quite a bit of trust and everything from, from the dogs. I'm lucky to be in this position, so. Yeah, man. This is a good time. <laughs> Damn. Lewis Wilson is still alive, man. He just made a baller-ass dragon eye, Millie. He's still with us, man. You know, with all the burning questions, this is a wrap. Yeah. <laughs> Lewis is spry, man. Father Time is gonna need to, like, put in another 20 years on that motherfucker. Nah, no, 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 we're not even close. Huge shout-outs to Dirty Louie, a.k.a. Lewis Wilson. It was nice to see him out at the gas. I see him at. I just saw him at the Glasscraft and Beat Expo down the corner now. Shout outs to that. That's we right, saw him. Yeah. Then we saw him again at the gas conference. Man, sat down, had a beer, and had a really nice talk. And then he gave us his extra drink tickets. So I was like, "Fuck yes, Lewis Wilson <laughs> is the man." <laughs> Take note, guys. Yeah, Take yeah, note. <laughs> yeah. He he knows how to play Mike Mason. <laughs> I'm just playing, man. I, they just had to go. Had some extra tickets. So they hooked your boy up. But <laughs> really, ni really nice to sit down and chat with him. And his wife is super cool, too. And they like she makes certain parts for the bonsai trees that he's doing now. I think it's so adorable that they get to work together. They're they're cute, man. I love Lewis, man. He's a, he's a cool dude. Yeah, But yeah, man, Kurt is just proceeding through this beaker shaping. Like I said, man, puffing that thing out. And that's what we were mentioning earlier. It's like a lot of times it's better to do these moves in a few steps. And especially in the beginning when you're not as confident in your hands and all of that, right? It's tempting to try and do it all in less moves, you know? Because, like, every time you go back in there is a new chance to fuck it all up. I get it. Trust me. I get it. But at the same token, man, you don't want to, like, you don't want to set. It's just as easy to fuck it up puffing it out too fast, you know, and, and um, inject some unevenness kind of thing. So I, th I think I think this sets a really good example of how to proceed when you're dealing with some fat ass glass and look at this thing this thing's getting diesel okay and like i said man it's like I, I the same i really proceed in this type of shaping the same way if that that cone shape is getting the bottom out first then working the saddle between and once you get kind of comfortable in that process and look at him taking his time here, setting that heat in, stepping back, keeping it moving, not puffing right away. He kind of steps back, analyzes, and then, then gives it a puff. It's giving that heat a chance to homogenize. Like there's like, I don't know, it reminds me of something uh, uh, Mickelson told me once. I'm really turning into that old dude who just like, and it reminds me of something Kiva Ford told me. <laughs> 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 Whatever. 
Mickelson once told me when I was taking a class with him. He was like, glass is three things. And I was like, what three things, Robert Mickelson? And he was <laughs> like, balance, rhythm, and timing. I think the first two you could probably toss out, but the timing thing? No, I'm just playing. It's all, <laughs> it's all true. <laughs> but um, timing is just so fucking important, you know? It's so easy to, like, um, it's so easy to rush out of the flame, first of all. We should never be rushing out of the flame, you know? You should always be kind of coming out the back or lifting up slowly while you're rotating so that you're not leaving a hot spot. But then uh, the other rush is uh, folks will often come out and start puffing into the glass immediately. Don't get me wrong, dudes. Some of these guys who are really good, man, I've watched people. Reminds me of um, that pyro demo where he was making like that uh, reticello encased marble shot glass. And he was just, he wanted to do something really complex. Like he had an ambitious plan for the time that he had available and he was i've never actually quite seen somebody work so fast he was just like in turbo mode and um it goes to show that like if your hands are working properly and everything is even and all that yeah you can work pretty fucking fast but that's not necessarily ideal um the smarter move is to like come out of the flame and keep rotating a moment and the heat is going to naturally homogenize from any, you know, microscopically thicker section to smaller section, or God forbid, you've got some real unevenness to deal with, um, getting the heat in as even as you can, but then also taking the time and letting the heat settle in. That shit will homogenize a little bit more, and you just might find a, a more even result from puffing just with a little bit later timing. It gives you a chance to really kind of settle in and get yourself into just the right position and get your hands. It gives you time to like, to like, fucking give your hands a pep talk. Like, all right, you guys are going to fucking blow. You're going to keep this motherfucker moving evenly. All right, here we go. <laughs> but for real though, the, the, that timing thing, like you, there's not necessarily a need to rush as soon as you pop out of the flame. Especially if you've soaked in a truly nice dank. Uh, even heat to the core. No need to rush. So it's one of those things where there's rarely a need to rush in glass, uh, truthfully. And then once you've done something 50 times, like, am I wrong or does it not, like, all of a sudden slow down so much, right? Like, think of your future you who's already done it 50 times and don't rush, you know, whatever kind of thing. Stevie in the chat says this culture shift that happens when Colorado blew up and hat pins became cool didn't mess with me. So I went dark. But, you know, I mean, I like collecting pins, but them guys who have like 40 pins on their hats and shit looking like an Applebee's waiter. Like, I don't know. That always sketches me out a little, you know, like you got too much <laughs> flair, dog. Too much your flair. flair. <laughs> yeah. I like but I'm also, pins, but I don't have anything to put them on. Yeah, I'm also a part of that, though, because I totally moved to Colorado, like, you know, a year ago or a year and a half ago or whatever. And... Because of the hat pins. Yeah, it's true, man. I was like, dude, I don't know where I can really <laughs> feel myself and rep all these damn hat pins. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, and it's so funny because, like, like, 30 seconds after I moved, Virginia was like, grow all the weed you want, dogs. And I was like, wait, what the fuck, man? <laughs> I risked my life for this. Now, now you're fucking letting everybody do it. This is crazy. <laughs> yeah, you know I could have narrated what what Kurt just did, but the truth is, I've never ever put a clear bottom on a fat ass thing like the good lord this homie is out in another universe from anything i've ever fucked with like yeah i'll tell you how to blow out a beaker but mm, 
you gotta just watch and you, maybe y'all tell me what he's doing cut not just playing but it's uh i you know what you saw is what you saw man he he really um i mean there was a moment there where he was kind of notching it down so to speak and getting it to the right amount of clear and now he's got that blow tube off and he can really kind of work this in just look at how cleanly that line is established like god th this is just exquisite work so stoked to be sharing this with you guys and i'm so so appreciative to events like las vegas who like i said let me actually stand on the damn stage like it's crazy but here we are and it allows us to d to document really amazing things and and here we go getting to the point where he's really got like just the bottom hot kind of thing and giving it a little bit of a flattening and then i think it'll kind of naturally kind of cave in a little bit with heat yeah the homies in the chat are asking about degenerate art and why it's not like on youtube i think it's not been on youtube because it was on netflix but then it came off of that and and carrie was shouting out dan collins and he has some kind of new thing where you can rent or buy his films or whatever. But shout outs to the dog, man. Nice guy. And, yeah, I tried um, to click through and it wasn't working. Yet, oh, really? But, okay, that's yeah. a shame. But yeah, uh, don't be afraid to follow Dan Collins on Instagram. Because that's where he's updating this stuff. And he's the one who kind of direct... He's like edited the film in collaboration with Slinger. I think there's a new Slinger film that's about to drop. Like, keep an eye on what this guy's up to. And check that out. Now he was hitting the Elmarver at the angle of the beaker and flattening. Just something to notice there. But really establishing this clean edge for the base. Yeah, Carrie's got the link in the chat there, but... If you're watching later and the chat's not there, Dan Collins Media, is that it? That's right. Boom. So, yeah. Generate Art is now Media. on Fire Team Films. Okay. So that's apparently where you can go to Sweet. stream or buy. Is this too gorgeous or what? I, man. And look at that beautiful Glass Vegas painting in the background. Glass Vegas is dope. There's always like two painters on either side of the stage at any given time. Okay, and yeah, so like I said, he kind of let that base naturally sink in a bit. You want that, you don't want like just a flat thing there. You always want to let the base sink in a bit. They used to call it a kick. Like in soft glass stuff, because that arch would make the glass survive. Back in the day, they wouldn't even survive with the flat bottom. Here comes Mattis Cookie, the dog we were talking about earlier, man. One of my, actually my very first, like, real teacher. Um, And he's coming up slinging some grabbers, but Kurt was like, nah, playboy, I've already got the Herbies. <laughs> Here, let me just let me try these. Yeah, but big shout outs to Mattis <laughs> Cookie, right man. Uh, absolutely amazing glass worker. Kuchi Cup. K U C H E C U P, right? And that's thing? Yep, that's right. Kuchi Cup. But he's really is an amazing flame worker, Venetian style, but he makes one to one representations of soda bottles and all sorts of stuff, and he's excellent. And his grabbers are the shit but not for that giant ass thing. All right doing a bit of a handle switch here because I think he wants to blow out uh, the middle notch or whatever, right? Is 
It's just a little oval, but he actually goes back and corrects that later. It's the kind of thing you only notice when it's like really spinning, you know? But just wait. He's going to go in and correct that. The man is like a perfectionist, you can tell. So yeah, I think this is where he's kind of wanting to correct a bit of that. Not the type of thing you'd ever really notice if it were finished and sitting on a table that way, but he could see it, you know, in rotation just like we can, so... There we go, a little more shaping on the beaker too. He might he might re-round the end a little later, but I I think it's happening pretty pretty na pretty now. <laughs> yes. Stevie says the silence magnifies or amplifies the intensity. Yeah, it's like a tense moment. It's like, is he going to round this motherfucker? <laughs> <laughs> So already looking a lot more proper. The dog was like, I'm not going out like that kind of thing, you know? And he didn't. It's a serious paddle right there, too. Look at that fucking thing. It's like the lathe paddle right there. I 
And I think it's to be noted uh, that he, he kind of worked the beaker shape round before going in on the edge, you know? Because, like, that's kind of where it formed, right? So he needed to get that straight, then the edge. And now this bad boy is, like, looking real fucking proper. My, my suspicion, at least. Right, I think he just jammed like a hollow blow tube on there just as a handle though. I didn't actually like need to open that all up. And I'm gonna make sure he gets that handle real straight. And now, yeah, he's going to go in and kind of blow out this section between the neck and the can, so to speak. So he wanted a really centered handle for that. And I was like, I'm moving the camera, dog. But here we go. This is always one of those big moves for me, <clears throat> even though I make rigs that are like one-tenth the size <laughs> but it's still one of those moments where you've you've already set up so much you know so it's always like oh, all right we gotta nail this <clears throat> and look at that look he's like now that he's already established a lot of the heat he's working a lot further out just not trying to let anything happen too quick or too crazy Bringing it out and going vertical a little bit. In my opinion, <clears throat> you can always kind of see the alignment a little better if you go vertical. If you go horizontal, you can almost like fool yourself a little. So it's always best to kind of come out horizontal and then kind of go vertical on your check and make sure everything is still in line before you're giving it the puffs and all that. See that he's switching to a different angle to check there. But yeah, don't be afraid to go to those vertical angles when you're trying to check a move like this, you know, to make sure that the neck is still in line with, with the beaker and everything. Same thing with even your handles or a point handle, for example. If you go vertical, you can always see much easier any little bit of kink, you know, where, where the angle changes. Whereas horizontally, it can actually still look pretty good. It's like, wait a minute. So sometimes you just got to switch around to give yourself a better angle on seeing any imperfections. While it's all hot and happy and easy to correct, you know. See so that? You just give it at all kinds of angles here. Just to be like, all right, that's right. Because, you know, it's like there's this saying. It's like the, the, the first heat is the best heat or whatever. So while he still has all this nice, gorgeous heat built into it, that is truly the most opportune time uh, to go in and do all these checks. Because if you have to go in and straighten that later... It's going to be very difficult to like truly establish an even heat in just in that section that you moved out, you know. So it's just something to think about when you take that extra minute. And yeah, that thing was like that. He just like glommed some solid glass on there, you know. I mean, it was happy, but it's that hollow seal on the bottom in my opinion is always a, like a more happy thing if you set it up right because it's got kind of that natural like arch effect 
that uh, makes glass kind of stronger in a connection. Um, so I really, you know, the hollow mm. connection there is always more ideal in my opinion, but he didn't need that. And, um, but I think he put that annealing flame on there just to make sure it was all really happy again before he goes to remove it because that, that type of solid, he really did just kind of glom it on there and, and it wasn't like too fucked up, but it was such that, that it could potentially shock things a little later. So just, just taking that extra second, give that, that annealing flame. Um, the other move you can do there, even with the hollow blow tubes is always kind of, you can heat it a little further back from the connection and then work towards the connection. So you're not shocking that connection. Don't get me wrong. If you did your job right, you know, a little pre-warm there and just go into it. But going in a little further out can definitely prevent issues and heating up the whole area before you fuck around is definitely wise. So yeah, now just remove any extra glass here and get this into a nice clean bottom. But this tube is already looking cool as fuck. The way he was like pushing the glass out on the pattern section, man, just makes that makes that part kick. It looks so good. I'm gonna step away for a second, Carrie, entertain the dogs. <laughs> sure, baby. So you know what this means. If Mike's going to refill a drink or empty his bladder, I need to tell you guys, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for being here. It's because you're here that we get to do this. Um, all 80 of you that are here with the whole 35 likes over there. You know, if you don't want to miss, if you don't want to miss these shows, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and get notifications. And then, uh, you won't miss any of the fresh fire that Mike drops because it's generally on a Tuesday, but every once in a while he'll go live from a trade show or something. And thanks to all the sponsors that help do this. Las Vegas is one of them. Every once in a while you'll see those sponsors pop up. Help company help. Colorado Color Company, Lamport Supply, GTT, Bethlehem, HBO. Uh, volume Oxygen in the House. Hot Classic. All right. Working that bottom. Just making sure that's nice, even, happy glass, you know, after removing that seal in the middle. So just really letting that even out. Look like he maybe even gave it a, a tiny puff. I don't know. But he'll let it sink back in. Don't get me wrong. It's just letting that all gather together happily. But yeah, just one of these moments where you got to take your time and let that, let that glass have a chance to come together. Carrie, you were shouting at Oxygen Frog in the background there for sponsoring the stage. Is that right? Is that what I heard? No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> As I recall, Jess was having all sorts of fits with running the, the lines to that stage. What? <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was shouting out sponsors, though, so I'll continue with Mountain Glass. And I think ABR needs to be fit in there, too, right? Yeah, yeah, man. ABR, who put on the FAM event. Although we haven't heard anything about that in years. I actually asked them to send me a new logo <laughs> a while back. I know. So. But yeah, they're good cats out there, man. I always, like, don't get me wrong. Let's just talk real, man. It's always, like, some, like, they got a, a weird rep. And then whenever we check those stories out, they're always bullshit. Like... They're, they're, They've always they're, been great to me. Yeah, and they're just humans when over I, there. When I man. bought my torch, I got the the best birthday present 
They yeah. threw in like a handwritten card and some color shorts and more. Yeah. It was very sweet of them. Absolutely, man. Uh, really good cats over there, man. Dave and Ross, both really great guys who I really enjoy <clears throat> running into at shows. And yeah, super sweet dudes, man. It's so funny. Frankly, most supplier complaints, like they just don't check out whenever we're like, all right, well, can you show us the email chain and this and that? And we check it out and it's like they were rude first or they didn't understand. Like, there's always... Like, none of these companies in our industry are really fucked up. It's hard for, uh, I'd be hard-pressed to even single out any of them, you know? Are some more cuddly than others? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> but nobody out there is really fucked up. And... Carrie, you can listen to Rush Limbaugh later. <laughs> I'm just playing. It's the ads on your channel. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta keep slamming that inject ad button. I never saw one. Bam! I just hit it again. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> I don't know if it happens for live viewers or if it's just like for later, but whatever. Oh, I wonder if that's it. Later viewers, interesting. Well, yeah. keep your eyes out. We got a we got a new YouTube ad for the HVO system. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So guys, here the homie is is preparing to open a hole for the joint. Switch into the GTT hand torch. Yeah, I was mentioning this earlier, but to be clear, like I don't really make any money from YouTube, man. Like it's usually about a hundred bucks a month and hundred and fifty on a good month. And um yeah, it's like you gotta have like cat videos or something much more, much more like commercially viable. And I'm not willing to play those games to like make content, you know, and like put somebody's face in there looking all mad or all these little tricks you play that make YouTube videos go viral. All right, so check it out. Very controlled opening of this hole here. Taking his time, push the, the wall through. But yeah, if you do see an ad on my channel, click that shit. <laughs> <It helps. laughs> Just click that shit and close the tab. I don't care if you watch it or not. But Yeah, at the same token, like, I was like, well, I should probably turn these things on, you know? Like, I, I it, really, guys, I always, they give you the option of, uh, and here's something real important, though. I'll finish that thought. They give me the option of skippable or non-skippable. I always pick skippable. So if you ever see an ad on this channel, you can always skip that shit. Um, but at the same token, it does kind of help. I'm going to be honest, man. Like, every time I cover an event, we lose money. I'm not trying to make a big deal of it. It, it It's just, don't please don't slight your boy for letting YouTube give me a, just a little bit of extra loot to help cover these shows. All right, so what I wanted to note there was that he, he pushed that out, but then you also saw him remove some material. Guys... If you're new to the ring seal game or whatever, just always remove material. Um, Preston Hanna, I'll pick this analogy up from him or metaphor or whatever the right term is, but um, he was talking about how like, he's like, I guess he works some construction jobs or something, but he was talking about how when you open a hole in drywall, um, you know, there's a fucking circle of drywall on the ground, right? same exact thing with glass like you should be removing as much material as the whole diameter so that when you ream it open the wall isn't getting all extra thick at the seal which is really helping to achieve that first part of the 40 40 20 where you want the wall weights to be even and nice and round and flush but how are you going to have the wall weight even if you just popped a hole open and reamed it and got all this extra thick ass glass at the edge there's no way that's going to match the wall of the rest of your tube. So you always need to remove some material there unless you're purposefully trying to push out an extension. That's the I, that's the only reason I can think of uh, to leave extra glass there. You know what I mean? Where the, the thing isn't going to seal actually right on the can. So just something to think about. But one of the biggest things that I see like in beginner ring seals, you know, 
Just too much material. You'd be better off going too thin than too thick. I'll say that. <laughs> Naked HD XYZ says, Stop watching the stream. <laughs> Find love. And they're probably right. They're probably right. <laughs> but well, the last one said AI can find you a girlfriend. Yeah. But I found love through glass, so you guys should just keep watching. That's true. All right, I gotta disappear for a second again. You don't have to be lonely. Flameworkersonly.com. I actually own that domain, but it's going to take you right back to Torch Talk. So, but if anybody ever wants to start like a Torch Workers dating site, now guys, if you notice there, he was actually using the joint tool to establish the hole size there, which is very smart because that's going to be the one creating the inner wall in the joint. Now he's using a bigger reamer to kind of get it pushed out, but that's a great way to establish that. Smash that like button if you have the chance, dogs. Not for me, but for when Kurt B pulls this up later and he knows people love him. It really is a sweet dude. It's always a pleasure to cross paths with this cat. There was a time when I was sitting on this because I kind of wanted him to potentially join us. But we're also sitting on like a bunch of this pipe classic footage and I, I want to approach him for that. And guys like this, I mean, he doesn't want to bug them, you know, and all that kind of thing. So, um, I'm going to reach out to him about maybe joining us for the pipe classic show. And that's when we'll be talking about this patterning thing. Where it's like, I can roughly narrate this stuff for you guys, no problem. Now, this joint was mostly made before he got here, guys. So, yeah, he's just kind of getting a nice joint holder into it. So, yeah, no joint forming demo, but... On torchpass.org, <laughs> there is a the Eugene's <laughs> joint forming demo from that Chicago Champ show, which is absolutely spectacular. Um, and yeah, homie in the chat was mentioning his wife, Sarah. She's super fucking cool. I was so afraid I was misremembering her name earlier. I was all like, uh, uh, Sarah? <laughs> <laughs> I, I only see them so often, but she's really fucking sweet. And Kurt's really sweet. They're like, they're a grade A glassy couple or whatever. <laughs> all right, so remove that extra glass. Gorgeous pattern section here. You can imagine that he shaped that out, you know, a little taller, right? and then reamed out the edge. I'm too much of a pussy for that, man. I just thicken up that edge, you know, and then re-ream it kind of thing. <laughs> it's so true, I'm not even lying. Flaring the edge on those joints, man, it's just like that's such an opportunity for things to go wrong. All right, so here he's going to get this thing, and you're going to imagine he wants to open it to the same size as that hole that he widened on the piece, you know, which was a little bit bigger than, like, the joint tool diameter. So 
Speed of Thought, thanks for joining us, man. Sorry you got to go to work, dog, but nothing wrong with that player. We all got to make money and never been harder to do that. So go make that paycheck, playboy. You can watch the rest later, and I'm glad you made it for some of this shit. Looks like he's about to lip wrap some of that white in between as well, which he look like he, he's done on pretty much every joint. Why is that? Well, I was just thinking about that, and I don't believe it's showing up as an actual lip wrap. But what I do believe is that it's covering the clear coat on the prep. I think that he sandblasts these down and everything and then sleeves them so they've got clear over the pattern. And what happens is when you open a hole like that, like don't get me wrong, you can do your best to kind of ream it out in a way that doesn't, uh, that, that lets the outer not get pushed back or anything right and have good luck. But there'll always kind of be this little bit of clear that gets into that seal. So you see that delineation so it's a great question, and I'm glad we got a chance to talk about this because I believe that these white lip wraps between the seals allow the prep to look almost seamless, more so than if the the white were getting a little thinned out and extra clear getting into the area of the seal. That's just my guess. It's one of the moments where I do wish we had, had Kurt with us, but like I said, man, we're sitting on a, like a, a good bit of footage from this dude and i don't i don't like to like overstay my welcome and shit you know what i mean like he's mentioned that he's down to join us but i didn't want to like keep bugging the guy and i had to take a, a good look at what we have and what makes sense you know like don't maybe maybe i'm overthinking things and he would have been like yeah fuck yeah we'll do both but i like to be a little bit more respectful and kind of pick and choose my moves so um i have Plus this prepare What's for the hot one style interview too you know yeah i mean i just have <laughs> this idealized interview that's coming up and i mean i don't want to talk about future shit but like I, we're about to really start talking pipe classic because like the the last <laughs> pipe classic is about to happen i had this tremendous honor of covering the last live one and uh, Tito, who runs it, is super cool. Everybody involved out there is super awesome. And uh, so we're going to do some like a, a show here in the near future with Tito for sure. But I'd also potentially maybe like to reach out to Kurt and have him with us and share that footage where he brought the whole CNC sandblaster on there. All right, so you guys saw the deal. He really got that hole prepped out to just the right size and he did almost a very light tack here and then now he's going to really work that in but that was really clean uh, Timothy in the chat's like hit up Sarah you know that's exactly the move yeah I'm going to totally <laughs> um can could Kurt join us please uh but no, for real, like, that is <laughs> my thought. Yeah, yeah, but it, I mean, it's not that. We've already talked about it in person at events. I know he's I down. Know, I just, just I didn't want to, like I said, man, overstay my welcome by asking him to join us for, like, five different demos that we've had the chance to film. You know, that doesn't, it just doesn't feel right to me. But the footage from Pipe Classic, I think, would be the most ideal time. And I'll reach out, and I know Tito will be joining us, but I think that that makes like a really logical show. So I'm gonna get the footage together, and he made a similar tube to this uh, with marijuana leaf patterns. Oh, cool! And the marijuana leaves were actually there. He had them sitting in like a jar of water. 
and then use the real weed plant that he had there to fucking make the the pattern on the tube. It was a crowd pleaser, man. Crowd so like pleaser. no vinyl, he just glued the leaves on. No, no, no. I just mean to say that the the leaves he used to generate the pattern were actually there for the audience at Pipe Classic. Oh, I see. Okay. He then scanned <laughs> them and put them into software. I've got footage of all of it, dogs. So we're gonna do a deep dive onto um, what's happening here. Homies are asking about that torch. I think that's a lynx. Definitely not a scorpion. A scorpion's like a two stage. Just with the beard, man. He looking like David Letterman when he took like five years off and then came back, you know, after his show ended <laughs> and he had a little big ass beard. Did that Netflix show. <laughs> he really does. He nice. looks just like old David Letterman. <laughs> Shane in the chat says, the fact that this pipe is white just makes my guts turn. Homie, this isn't even like a cool white. He said that he uses Glass Alchemy Snow White. Which, my opinion, definitely inferior to Star White from North, North uh, Star. Definitely inferior to White Out from Tag. At this point, it's almost like the, the, the weirdest white on the market. Like, damn, Glass Alchemy, why don't you just like put out a new, new, uh, new white? Cause why do you say that? It's just more bubbly and it's it's a more sensitive white. Okay. It's not to say it's not usable. Obviously, it's usable. Clearly, you just need to have you know Kurt you B's just, experience with it. Right, you just gotta <laughs> be as good as Kurt B. Now I'm just playing, but at the same token, man's I really, 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 really prefer Star White um, that white out. And now you've got these new extra dense whites like the Ghost and lotus and all that like so yeah got that on there and there was your last like 20 percent in my opinion he did such a quick stick that that looked like the last 20 or whatever of cleaning it up with a hand torch Obviously, this whole math is not made for, like, giant beakers. But he just needed a, just a little more time, you know, to go around it with that hand torch and really work that in. And now using this nice annealing flame, he's going to remove that, that joint. I think he might even put the joint plug back in and, like, do some perfecting work here is what I noticed. He was like, psych? Yeah, homies in the chat talking about that ghost white. Yeah, it's not like a lotus or whatever. It'll blue out a little bit if you thin it out and such. But it's pretty awesome. And even some of the newer batches of lotus are apparently not as dense. And they'll also kind of blue out the same way. Them North Star motherfuckers are smart. They probably got like a corning level materials lab and they're just like, throw it into the mass spectrometer <laughs> and it tells them all the ingredients and then they make a better version. I don't know. I don't know how it all works. Well, it sounded reasonable. <laughs> get a message from Abe earlier. Delete that comment, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be hearing from my lawyers. Just playing. Carry on that. COVID talk. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Delirious from the Rona dogs. That's all I gotta say. That's, that's right. <laughs> Don't listen to anything she says. <laughs> it was all the fever dream. 
But Wait, seriously, doggy. Seriously, dogs wish the homegirl well. She's recovering. <laughs> Mike's like looking at me over here, holding my head. Oh, Macron 3.0. Yeah, she kind of looks like she's dying right now. So, uh, <laughs> she's okay. It's okay. I'm holding, my, I'm holding my head together. She sounds good, but she looks like she's about to throw up on the toilet or something. <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. I feel better. So, okay, just don't show me. Please. You've been on screen for the last three minutes. Uh, <laughs> you're hilarious. Yeah, I think the I think Kurt, um, like I said, man, he's a little bit of a perfectionist, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, he knocked the the joint holder out, and then I think he was like not happy with the angle when he really took that last closer look at it. So he put the plug back in. And he was like, "Nah, son." We're not going out like that. So yeah, just taking some extra time here with this hand torch and really drilling in what he, he didn't like. And there goes the Glass Vegas painting. I assume that Amy has like a basement with like 40 of these all over the walls. <laughs> all over the... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> big shout outs to Amy Short. One of the big people behind this event. And her family, uh, Leanne, their mom. They're awesome cats. I think they really it's hit true. the ground running with this because they've been doing the Glasscraft and Beat Expo for many years, and then their company does trade shows for other type of industries as well. Like one week they might be doing like the hard drive show, you know. One week they're doing another show. Extremely professional folks. Yeah, man, the homie just just really drilling that that seal in and that making for just this ideal taper between the joint and the body. Sometimes you just got to take your time there. And then, yeah, he spent a lot of time on that bottom, and, and so now he's got to go in on the top part, right? So, yeah, just drilling this heat in. Giving it puffs as needed, letting the material relax as needed. And after doing this a few times, you end up with that gorgeous, smooth taper out. No different than any of these moves where you kind of got to repeat them. But those little moves in the seal, it's like a microscopic version of that, you know, where you're just heating this little thing and it's, you know, it's relaxing down. And then you give it that little puff and it comes back out and you bring it in and out. Shout outs to Alexis there in the background, one of the homegirls who comes out and helps uh, photograph at Glass Vegas. Her pictures are cool as hell. It's like, oh, this one doesn't have Mike Mason in it just right yet. Hang on. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure they're like, God damn it, this guy on the corner of the stage, man, fucking up <laughs> on my good shots, you know? But they make She's, it work. She wants to be in your, your position right now. Probably, yeah. <laughs> but I'm just like Walter White up in this. I'm like, this is my territory. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the same token, man. I mean, it's been many years now. And these, these folks who are professional and cool, you know, like they just keep showing up. She's one of them. I've been seeing her, you know, we've been 
sharing the the filming opportunity for many years now i don't know her very well but the truth is that she's always super nice super professional always fucking there always getting the good shots and i can i, I don't know all the details i can just see why glass vegas has her back out every year you know like her and a few other cats man it's like we're like this glass vegas media team of people who have maybe survive some kind of cut it's not magic just be professional you know i got no secret sauce <clears throat> it's the same thing as glass to show up work fucking hard as hell you know what i mean like when the when it's go time like it's fucking go time. It's not time to be like sitting around going to take dabs out at the Puffco area or you know, like all that. Not hating. The Puffco area is fucking awesome. I and mean, that's all, my, all I do when I'm there. All my friends are out there kicking it. It's true. And Carrie's out there the whole time. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Carrie's <laughs> just like me, you know what I mean? Like we treat this like a job. For her it really is. For me, it's all very self-deterministic, but dare I say the reason it all keeps working is because my self-determination is that it's best to work hard as fuck for the homies who have given me a beautiful opportunity. And that includes y'all. You know what I mean? That's y'all and the events. And it's just like, how the fuck could I let y'all down? So we have plenty of time out here, but dare I say, I think anybody who's crossed paths with me at these events knows that I'm not out here playing games when it's time to film. When it's time to share this shit and have a party together, yeah, we're going to get more loose. But at the same token, when it's time to actually film this amazing stuff that we're getting to watch right now, and it's time to honor y'all and the events that have trusted me to be in that position. So, no, no, we do. I mean, we really hit it hard. And, yeah, speaking of hitting it hard, man, the, the dog is just going through this thing and really making sure this is all really gorgeous and even. Just Davis is Joe Biden. Old Carrie. I'm always on time. It's like, Such a great comment, exactly. man. Exactly. We totally <laughs> watched the uh, the web telescope, the like the unveiling, the White House press conference unveiling of the images. You know, an our hour first, and a half later. <laughs> yeah, our first chance to see these amazing images from this telescope. That's probably the greatest accomplishment humans have ever fucking made certainly in terms of space technology and all that right the james webb telescope is absolutely incredible what it took to build this thing what it took to get it into its position um everything about it is absolutely fucking incredible and then the Im like the images they released today it's my desktop wallpaper now the image of the uh, nice. nebula it's the, the the coolest space picture I've ever seen in my fucking life. It's truly unbelievable what they do with this thing. Yeah, it's pretty intense. But Joe anyway, fucking Biden. Joe. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like I was like, Carrie, oh, this, this press conference is going live in like 20 minutes. Let's watch. <laughs> and then the press conference started like an hour plus late. Because Joe Biden was like fucking working on his Mustang in the garage or some shit. I don't know. No, and he was packing for a Saudi Arabia trip. He claimed that he was something. working on some kind of um, <laughs> Middle Eastern policy, but that's totally bullshit, man. <laughs> like, he's not Trump, so I mean, he wasn't, like, at McDonald's, but he was definitely doing something bullshit.
grain of sand at arm's length, even. And Stevie's sharing what he's got on his <laughs> screensaver. Chat's going, <laughs> chat's going political. <laughs> I am neither a Republican nor a Democrat. I'm like an old school libertarian. Before that meant like Tea Party Q Tart or whatever the term is or whatever. <laughs> and uh, so I try to see all of this as fairly as I can. But after that Biden dude made us wait an hour and a half for the space nudes, I was like, <laughs> fuck that, dude. I'll vote Trump next time. I don't give a shit. Fuck that. He never made me wait for no space conference. Fuck that shit. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't vote Trump either, but. <laughs> My fucker need to learn. Don't, don't don't make the homies wait for space pictures. Fuck. So did this piece see kiln time at all? Or was it mostly flame and yield? Like throughout the process? I didn't see too many trips to the kiln. I'm sure there were some. Like while he was working on the neck, the base was in the kiln. Or was that all one piece? Oh, I'm sure. No, no. I mean, when yeah. he after he attached it, I don't think there was much of that. I think he pretty much just used the the flame and kneel. Just got to wait out the aftermath of the political stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. Yeah, y'all saw that gorgeous annealing flame. I mean, that carbon soot is like a good indication, you know? Because that, I forget what temperature it is, but the, I think the carbon soot like burns off relatively a little higher than annealing temperature. So it's like, if you sooted it up, you know it's kind of come down to annealing temperature. And then if the soot starts burning off, you know you're also kind of past annealing temperature. So it's just kind of an easy way to see that. All right, so here we go. He, we got this in the grabbers now, and he's just kind of pulling material out first. And you can imagine he just wants to remove this clear. So yeah, there's another flame cut with also with that puff out right at the last second, which super thins the material. <laughs> Michael Howell in the chat says, hunger fun spots on Patreon opened up. Yeah, it's true. There are some spots and you're welcome to grab them. But I'm totally going to limit those soon, actually. I've been organically letting it drop just a little bit. Just because it's hard to get a certain amount of canes, like, per milli pull, and then it just ends up taking me longer than the time, you know, to, to get it all done. And then I feel bad because the packs are late. So, yeah, it can be a little bit of a thing, but... All right, so here we go. You guys can see, like, he blew that out so thin that there was just this raised lip of the clear. Now he's just going around and cooking that back and cutting back what's what's up in the zone. And really soon, with a couple, with a little bit of probably paddling and a bit of reaming and all that, this is going to end up looking like almost like a stock tube coming out of the middle there all right the homies in the chat say about a thousand degrees which is yeah very close to our annealing temperature you know 1050 annealing 980 or so is where you enter the stress zone so that carbon is a good indication that you're right there in the zone
Stevie in the chat says, the key to this move is the Herbert Arnold grabbers. I'm not inclined to disagree there, man. The Herbert Arnold grabbers are extremely precise. Like if you if if you set yourself up centered, then you're gonna be able to create a centered ending here, no problem. Um yeah, those are excellent. Th those are Herbert Arnold flask grabbers. Which is, like I said, man, I mean, we call this a beaker up here in the pipe world. But the truth is, is that it's not like a scientific beaker. Beakers are cups. But the Herbert Arnold flask grabbers have this claw shape designed to grab the, the edge of that cone. Now, the negative side of the Herbert Arnold grabbers is that you almost need two or three pairs to hit a bunch of different ranges. Look at this tube, you guys. So fucking nice. Absolutely incredible. Huge shout-outs to Kurt B. for sharing this with us and with the Glass Vegas audience. Huge shout-outs to Glass Vegas. Um, But yeah, what were we talking about, Gary, before that? Speakers. No. Herbert Arnold Grabbers? You, know, you obviously see what I got sidetracked on. Oh, yeah, Herbert Arnold Grabbers. <laughs> yeah, you, you kind of need, like, a few pairs. Like, they don't work in the biggest range. So some of these other grabbers can, um, you know, potentially hit bigger ranges, but not as... and they But they just don't hold as, like, well and as, like, super precisely centered. Herbert Arnold tools are like laid straight kind of thing. So, yeah. Um, and dogs, the companies we're seeing right here for just a minute, these are the folks that pitch in and make it possible to do this. I can't thank them enough for pitching in month after month and making it possible to, to keep doing what we're doing here and trusting me to spend these funds wisely and... Um, take us to these different events you know Woo, sorry like sneeze a clock right about to switch over but i'm back i'm back i'm back <laughs> anyways um homies huge shout outs to kurt for sharing this amazing demo with us to the Glass Vegas homies. Um, if you weren't here earlier, I, I unboxed this beautiful gift they sent me. But this one's a little smaller than the last one, but it's like way more diesel. It's a di it's like a it's like an alternate like I love it. I love this fucking thing. Calm in the house, man. Fucking torch talk logo, dude. So cool. I really. I just can't shout the Glass Vegas homies out enough. Fucking Amy, her mom Leanne, everybody else who works out there. Like, they're all just really, really kind, amazing people. Speaking of amazing people, Carrie, thank you so much for joining me tonight and providing some insight and a kind voice. I appreciate you. Absolutely. Thanks for hanging in there with me. Me, You're the I am dopest. so ready to go to bed. <laughs> yeah, this oh, you. thank you. COVID Carrie over here. Carrie, Carrie is legitimately joining us as she's recovering <laughs> from the coronavirus. But I tell you, she uh, puts the va va voom in coronavirus <laughs> or whatever. I don't know. This plane. Um, he is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> My dogs, thanks so much uh, for joining us tonight. If you didn't know, by the way, we're coming at you live in 2K tonight. <laughs> I made that earlier, but totally forgot to share it. So, <laughs> 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 Anyways, homies, I really do appreciate all y'all dogs out there tuning in and making this a party and everybody who has just made this a kind <laughs> community. That's really the secret sauce. It's not like my hard work and all that bullshit. Like, that, like that's cool, but the truth is, is that it's because y'all out there are kind and make this a beautiful scene. That's why we get to keep sharing this stuff. Fucking 
We're about to be covering year seven of Glass Vegas. I can't believe it. By the way, set your calendars if you didn't catch this earlier. We got dates. And, uh, man, I would it would be a pleasure to meet some of y'all out there. But regardless, I'm just so stoked to be part of this thing. And, and honestly, I'm just thrilled that, that you guys are here with us. Like, uh, you guys have made my life like something like extra special i don't know where else to put it man i am just so lucky to get to do what i do as i've said before i'm the luckiest man in boro i don't know but i genuinely feel that way and, and it's it's all because you guys make this the kind thing and give us this opportunity to have these good times together and give us something to connect with so yeah i really do appreciate y'all out there one more last shout out to covid carry <laughs> Hi. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Thanks, Mike, for putting this together for us. Send her some uh, some positive. Send her some thoughts and prayers. <laughs> yes. <laughs> to re to recover from this vicious coronavirus. Yes. yes. <laughs> Anyways, homies, much love. I really do appreciate y'all out there. Thanks for tuning in. Huge shout outs to again to Kurt B for sharing this amazing demo with us and just always being the nicest guy when I put a camera in his face. We have quite a bit more to share from him and some really critical stuff. So if you enjoyed this tonight, trust me, we're going to be back soon with some more fucking Kurt heat. Like I said, man, straight industry legend. Incredibly kind guy. Same goes for his homegirl, Sarah. Anyways, I really do appreciate y'all out there. I'm going to wrap it up right now. Peace, y'all. Good night.